As I point to baby Chaz on the uh, FaceTime. FaceTime. Oh, baby. It's good to be at the Rose Hour number three. Eight o'clock hour. We're having a lot of fun talking some wars. What a difference a day makes. What a difference a day makes. As I got to hang up the FaceTime because now baby Chaz is screaming, oh, baby. It's time to turn up. Warriors get a big win last night. <laughs> My dad does it every time. <laughs> what was that? Oh! Dude, oh, baby. I, Jordan, Jordan uh, from Union City yesterday, Jay Dell was like, you got to start the post game show with the old baby. Maybe I'll bring it out if they get some big wins on his homestand. Maybe on television. But that, that what a difference a day makes, man. It was so down and out with this Warriors team. So much weird stuff's been happening this season. But to get a win like that and seeing the young guys contribute. Seth Curry had a good floor game. 20 points, 13 assists. Dynamic. Kevon Looney, a double-double. Dynamic. 14th double double of the season. Draymond Green woke up in the second half and played great basketball. Jordan Poole played controlled basketball, didn't turn the ball over. It's a lot to feel good about. Now, can they start to get on the roll here? And maybe there is some shades of last season where they went 5 and 1 down a stretch and won their last five games, but also had a very good, solid game against the Phoenix Suns. Remember at Chase Center where they lost a close one when Draymond Green made his return with that set. Let's bring in our 95 7 game insider, Anthony Slater, who's now covered the Sacramento Kings full time and then they're giving me heat. People were saying, light the beam. They're living signs up on my car saying, light the beam. But Anthony Slater from time to time does cover the Golden State Warriors. What up, Slates? What up? <laughs> How's the Kings beat going? Oh, uh, two-game losing streak. They're crumbling. <laughs> uh, uh-oh. Are you switching sides? Are you going to come back to the Warrior beat? I'll be there Friday night. My choice is Warriors Sixers or Kings Suns. I'll be at Warriors Sixers. Wow. Let's look go. at you. Look at you making the executive decision. No, seriously. Uh, I, you didn't travel on this trip, huh? You stay back? Yeah, that's more of a personal life thing. But, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I hope I hope everything is going well. It's, but all, it's all good. It's yeah, all good. Nah, I'm sure, I'm sure everything worked out. And, uh, Obviously, you watch all the games. You break all the games down. I read your article on uh, Jonathan Kaminga last night, so I guess let's start there. Watching this two-way player come into his own in his last six games, shooting over 60% from the floor, and over 45 actually 50% from the three-point line, but it's a shot discernment. He said yesterday in the post-game show that he's understanding where they'd be, and then defensively watching him pick up Luka 94 feet. I'm not going to go crazy over the lack of rebounding, because he is coming into his own as an individual defender and knowing where to be offensively, this is a great sign for the Golden State Warriors if Wiggins comes back. Now, all of a sudden, you got another piece to play with, another chess piece down the stretch. Yeah, and, you know, he's had these stretches. Um, I can remember a game in Dallas earlier this season. He played a very similar game. You know, he was picking up Luka full court, mm -hmm. um, and that was during a road trip. He played, well, remember the Utah game where he shut uh, – Clarkson down, down yeah. the stretch. He had Clarkson yep. like trying to fight him. Yep. Yep. Brandon was, Ingram. What about great. Brandon Ingram that Friday night yep. at Chase Center against the Pels? Yep. And, you know, the, those are often during like five game stretches where Kaminga um, looks like this in a lot of ways, you know, and you could argue, hey, this is the best of those five game stretches. I think Steve did say that last night. Um, but, you know, and that is kind of what young players do, right? They seem like they figure it out. They take two steps forward, they take one back. But, um, what I like, you know, he's he's kind of punishing teams for sagging off of him right now. He's, he, he's I think, 13 to 26 from three in March. He's up to 36% from three uh, for the season. I wonder if defenses begin to get out on him a bit more because that's what I think we've seen is that's what he's going to face in the playoffs. I think these veteran defenses, these veteran coaching staffs are going to try to give him shots and really play him off the floor. That's why Steve Kerr's had a tough time playing him with Looney and Draymond together. Um, and I just think he, you know, it's been a good sign lately that he's been hitting his, his jumper because I think that does give him the confidence that, you know, kind of lets the rest of his game flourish because we know he can individually defend. We know he can score downhill. You know, I I don't want to get too ahead of myself because I nothing drives me crazier than like you're in the middle of a great season or a, a, a great opportunity for a team to get into the playoffs and make a deep run. But but I'm I'm just thinking about Curry moving forward, like as he starts to age and and he like ticks down a little in terms of him being the number one dude and the usage rate through the roof and he carries his team team through his scoring. When you see him have a floor game like he did last night, can't you envision him being more of a distributor as the years go on, as Kaminga takes a step forward? Like, Because that was something that I took away from last night's game. I, I, am I crazy to think that? 
No, I mean, you know, he can he can pass. <laughs> he he can always he's always been able to pass. Um, it's like maybe not his uh, like largest instinct when he's on the court. You know, he loves uh, to, to bomb away from three, but you know, he could be a lot of things. If if at four years old he needs to be JJ Redick, he could be JJ Redick, right? I mean, he can just kind of stand and space the floor. Obviously, mm. um, you know, he can. As as the fan base will tell you, he could run a lot more high screens every game if if the Warriors decided that was like the, the proper offense to run. Um, I think if he said, "Hey, I'm, I want to average ten assists a game," you know, kind of like what James Harden has done in Philly this year, right? You know, this is right. not the James Harden from Houston. It's, mm-hmm. it, he's turned into I think he leads the NBA in assists, and he's down, you know, around like nineteen, twenty points a game. Like that could be the Steph Curry if, if the team dictated it. And maybe it will moving forward um, as he ages. As like you said, if Kaminga is like on the rise, if mm-hmm. Pool sticks around and and kind of becomes the go to scorer as he's twenty six years old. If they, you know, go get another score, um, maybe that is you know the type of point guard Steph Curry needs to be. Uh, and I think he's good enough and sharp enough to to do it. Just like I said, he could also just be a, a spacing shooter if he needed to be at the age of, of thirty nine or something like that. Nah, that's a good call. Anthony Slater here on the Morning Raw. Sorry, 95-7, the game insider. Nobody does it better when covering the NBA, in my opinion. He breaks the game down. He teaches us something left and right. And great article last night about Jonathan Kaminga. Um, just looking at this team and offensively, we'll get to the defense in a second. But I think when the Warriors have more balance, they're just so much more dynamic. Last night, 38-51 inside the arc and in the first half i believe they were 19 to 23 inside the arc just 39 three-point attempts down from their average of 46 47 on the season and we saw that in that uh, on a, a couple home stands ago where they beat the blazers and only shoot about 30 36 threes and it happened later on on that home stand the balance offensively was a lot better last night that's when they're at their best yeah there was there is a common thread between those two games you mentioned they were facing Drew Eubanks and uh, Dwight Powell. I know. I didn't yeah. want to go there, Anthony. I know no rim protection, but damn it, they no. hardly take advantage of it. Yeah, no, it's good, but it's like, you know, that's because yeah. against Memphis, Jaron Jackson's back there. Against yeah. Atlanta, Clint Capella's back well, there. And well, it's not even just those two. It's just like better defense is longer. Like, like Dallas stinks defensively. They do. They're 28th you know, in shot blocking. They're off. Let me ask you this, though, Anthony. The one big lineup I really like because when you do play Draymond and Looney together, it feels like that paint in because is congested, and you talk about Jaron Jackson Jr., he gets a sag back in the paint. Anthony Davis, we've seen it twice now with the Lakers where he sags back in the paint. I kind of like that one big lineup to kind of break it apart, and I think it gives them a better it, be, it gives them a better shot at going to the rim against those sad shot blockers like Jaron Jackson Jr. and Anthony Davis. Well, this is the tug of war this coaching staff has been dealing with for two seasons now. They try to break those guys up. Well, there are definitely people behind the scenes that continue to suggest, hey, like split them up. You know, this is 2023. You don't play two non shooters. But guess what happens every time they, they break them up? They play worse because, like, they're just better with, with Draymond and Looney together. Go back to that Memphis series uh, last season. They took Looney out of the starting lineup. They got crunched by, like, 55 points in uh, Memphis in game five. And the veterans go on the, the plane up to Mike Brown because Steve Kerr's not even uh, coaching at the time. I remember he was in COVID protocol. Yeah. Uh, and they said, put Looney back in the starting lineup. Then Looney gets 22 rebounds, and they close out the Memphis series. Uh, you know, and they they did – look, Otto Porter started the last three games of the Boston series. Mm-hmm. You know, they had a stretch four out there. Um, but I think Looney has become so important and vital to what they do that it's very difficult for them not to play Looney and Draymond together because like those are two of their five best players. Yeah. Um, but you're right, like they're missing the stretch four element mm. because you know you you would like to play Kaminga more with them, but defenses right. don't respect Kaminga out on the perimeter, and that's part of you know the need for spacing. It's honestly mm-hmm. why Anthony Lamb continues to play a lot of minutes because he at least. It's like the facsimile of the auto porter, the stretch four. Right. Um, but you're right. I mean, uh, again, like I said, this is uh, what this coaching staff has been dealing with for two years, like wanting to split them up, but having a tough time splitting them up. I mean, it felt like a vintage fourth quarter uh, of IQ from Draymond Green. Uh, I, man, they just <sighs> seeing him hit that and one and then, you know, flex like that. In terms of vibes, in terms of just the feel of the chemistry and the sense of the moment, didn't that feel like a like a? I feel like I said this five times this year, but it felt like a turning moment for this team. 
Yeah, you know, he even had the two stops down the stretch. Yeah. You know, vertical, he had verticality on, on Hardy, who, which, by the way, Dave Hardy looked pretty good last night, right? He did. Um, He's playing well. But, yeah, he did. Um, but, yeah, he had that, and then, obviously, he stopped Luca uh, with, like, you know, four seconds left, and it was a little reminiscent. Remember the season a few years ago where he had, like, uh, like seven clutch defensive plays in the last five seconds of, mm-hmm. like, seven different wins? Mm-hmm. Um, it felt like that. He obviously had to seal off that the, the team mentioned post game to help Steph get that layup. Um, he's capable of that. I mean, the one thing I don't doubt about Draymond is like winning time. Like you know, big game, one minute left. It's very close. Like he's gonna probably he's gonna be locked in, and when he's locked in, he's probably gonna make a smart play and, and probably make a winning play. Um, so like that part, I don't doubt now. You know, grander scope. You know, what type of season is he having? Uh, how does his body hold up over the long haul? We'll see. Uh, but yeah, that was vintage Draymond last night. But that's not that big a surprise. It was a big game. Yeah, no doubt. Anthony Slater here on the on the morning rolls on ninety five seven. The game. No, we'll get to Jordan Poole in just a second. But Shasky brought up Diva Chenzo earlier, and you know he's had a rough road trip. I thought he played better last night defensively, offensively. Took all his attempts from the three point line, fourteen points. Is he battling fatigue here because he hasn't played this many minutes before over the course of his career? Uh, what's going on with DDV? Do you sense fatigue issues? Are the coaching staff worried about him? Are they looking for Obviously, you can't take any days off right now. You're in the heat of the playoff race, but maybe that Portland game at the end of the season, he may not play because it, they already have something clicks. What's going on with DDV? Yeah, you know, I think, number one, he wasn't just going to, like, Scorch from three all season, right? right? I mean, like we're talking about a guy career wise is in the mid thirties. I think, right? You know, last couple seasons he battled injuries, he was like low thirties. So mm-hmm. this has been like a career year from three. You know, he's probably going to cool off it. I think this is just one of those stretches he's cooling off a little bit. Um, you did make the good point. Like, look at his minute totals. I mean, right. you know what? Is, he's uh, up over thirty every game. You know, early in the season he was like a eighteen minute guy off the bench. That's kind of what you thought he was going to be this season, but. Now, I mean, he's starting over Jordan Poole, like, every night. Um, maybe they could minimize the minutes. I think this is where Kaminga uh, can can come into the, the picture. Maybe, like, I'd play Kaminga right now 30 minutes a game. Now, yeah, no doubt. it's tougher to fit him in lineups, right? DiVincenzo fits in every lineup. I think that's part of the reason Kirk goes to him so much. And he's kind of the best perimeter defender right now, I guess. You know, you would you could argue Kaminga is, but I think DiVincenzo is trusted more. But right now is one of those stretches where Kaminga's locked in, and I just think you need to maximize that by, like, really kind of, you know, let him off the leash, essentially. Uh, and part of that might be minimizing DiVincenzo's workload right now, because I agree with you, he does look a little tired, understandably. All right. I feel like we've gone way too long. We've got to address the officiating. Now, I was losing my mind for a variety of reasons yesterday. Obviously, Dallas has lost their mind this morning and last night, and, and Mark Cuban's retweeting everything. I uh, just the let's start with Luca before we get to just the actual officials themselves. I will defend them on one element. Draymond complains a lot, but Luca, I charted 21 times. He turned one official in the first half, okay, and had both palms out or hands up, like screaming, like berating an official. It's it's out of control. I feel like the league needs to step in and talk to guys specifically like Luca. And nip this in the bud because he's a fantastic player, and it, it's all you know brushed aside. Because all I'm watching is him crying to the officials as we zoom in on the camera. A- am I alone in the frustration watching Luca complain to officials? I think the league needs to hire you. You charted this 21 times in the first half. <laughs> I mean, Slayer, this is the advanced analytics that you get from uh, a guy who's you know just a mensch watching basketball at a high level. I can't wait for you early in this baseball season with all these rule changes. I mean, you're going to be lighting up the airways with some of this stuff. Oh, I, come on. Uh, Sl- Slater, Slater. Casey though. Smith's already the pro baseball Hall yeah, of Fame. Yeah, no, time out. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Time out. I'm kidding. No, but I'm honestly, kidding, though, guys. I know you are. I know you are. I love no, you. No, I know. Are you? I, I like it was a poorly officiated game last night. Agreed. Both sides. But the Luca uh, element. Like, you watch yeah. the league as a whole. But I know they, Dre complains because I'm. They, they it takes all one complain, to know one. Though. No, Luca LeBron, takes it to another level. Am I tripping? These guys all do that. Luca's bad. Uh, Luca's bad enough. Like, it's like a big thing in Dallas like, for him to stop, right? I mean, like you saw it last night. It's, it's kind of a good thing for <laughs> opponents, the Warriors last night, where he's complaining and then there's a five on four going the other way. And he's sitting there, like, yelling at the referee. So um, it's like Jason Kidd's really had to deal with this. You know, he is one technical from a suspension, and he could have got it last night. 
Um, <laughs> so it's you know he's young. Like what is he? He's still only twenty three. Uh, it's it, you, I agree. I mean, what do what do you think the league should do? Just I, like I don't know. more often for tees, like punish like more suspensions. I mean, I don't like it's you know it's just, it's. Just, Tough thing to solve. Here's what and I would and say. you have a lot of new referees. The old guard is out, so you got all these new guys who are trying to establish themselves. Maybe they need to be a little more strict. Maybe they need to say, hey, that's enough here. But when you get LeBron James throwing temper tantrums at the end of a game in Boston, I get it was a bad call, but you're throwing a tantrum, showing up the refs, and they do nothing about it. And they're not doing anything about Luka Doncic. What are they going to do? They're going to they're gonna continue this to roll what, over these guys. Yeah, but this is what you do. This is what I think you should do. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm out of line here. I think David Stern, back in the day, would have said, their names on a press conference. Get in front of a podium and say, look, guys rest. like Luka, like LeBron, crying on every single possession, it's a bad look for us. And it's making it very difficult to enjoy the game because we're zoomed in on the players at every single stoppage of the ball, and we're watching them cry and complain. It's just, it's really a bad look. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this has been a problem beyond just this little mini era. I can remember the Doc Rivers Clippers who were like yes. notorious yep. for this. Um but also, you know, I don't know. Did you guys see the Clippers Thunder game? It was I did uh, two nights ago. Yeah, where Kawhi, you yeah. had the one referee, like you know, it was Joe Shasty out there, a referee <laughs> uniform. You had T on Kawhi for like, you know, what did Kawhi do? He's probably like and one, right? Like, yeah, it was like T on him, and Terrence Mann's like, why did you do that? And he went technical, technical. You're gone. And it was like, okay, I'm not sure we want that either, right? Like, why did you just throw this dude out for like? basically nothing so i don't know there's a balance but i mean i agree with you like it was not that delightful to watch luca operate last night but some of that's just on luca like you know the mavericks need to get through to him right. our cube needs to get through to him um because you know you're not just going to be throwing luca Doncic out of every game no you know he needs to curb his own behavior but like in some ways that's not on the ref that's kind of on luca and the mavericks it's it's true. He, they are that's he, a good point. and he's driving jason kids crazy Trust me, the Mavis got stuff. It's like, Luca, dude. And he was bad last <laughs> night, like out of shape and not getting back. And he still gives it 30 points and 17 I mean, he's, assists. He's a all 27 player. points. But he, he's got to stop he's crying. An but player. think about where he learned it from, you know, from this era of NBA basketball. These guys all cry. Cry, 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 cry. All right, Jordan Poole, no turnovers last night. I guess that's a step in the right direction for him. 16 points, six assists. The three balls not fl- working for him. But I did like the late game mid range jumper that he took, Anthony. This is a positive for Jordan Poole as he just continues to get railroaded by the press and fans out here in the Bay Area. Yeah, you know, I thought Atlanta was one of his low points of the season. I thought he was, like, really bad defensively that game. Like, uh, you know, an eyesore out there, you know, not getting back in transition, just kind of letting this guy go by. Um, and in the game since Memphis, uh, then the last two wins, Houston-Dallas, he's at least been more engaged defensively, um, you know, trying out there, which has been a big thing. And then, yeah, I I can't remember too many of the really bad threes in the last few games either, right? That, hey, you get an offensive rebound, you kick it out to reset, and you know, why is he taking a 30-footer right now, even though he's cold? Um, and the last two second halves you mentioned, I don't know what the assist to turnovers were in the second half last time. may have just said it, but I know it was six assists, zero turnovers mm-hmm. in Houston. Very controlled game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I uh, Felt like he played that way last night. He wasn't the star last night, but he doesn't need to be the star. I think sometimes he's searching that out too much, right? Those, yep. um, you know, those chase center surges that he had a mm-hmm. lot late last season, and even sometimes this season, I feel like he's just hunting those big stretches, those big moments that that would will make him the post game story. Um, he's better this season, at least while he's colder this season when he just kind of throttles back a little bit because he still has a bunch of talent. He still has playmaking that this team doesn't have, dribble skill, mid-range skill, uh, and it's very useful to the Warriors, but it just gets out of control when the turnovers are ramped up. The deep threes that he's making, you know, 20% yeah. of are, are, are ramped up. 11 points, 4 assists for Jordan Poole off the bench yesterday, 12 minutes, 23 seconds in the second half. Real quick, 4 seed, the Warriors? I mean, they're two games back in the lost column with the Phoenix Suns, but it is possible. Yeah, yeah, you look. I mean, Paul George after the rest of the regular season, they're in the five seed, so they're catchable at this point. Big Thunder Clippers game, I believe. Tonight. Huge, uh, yeah, huge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because the Thunder's coming up under the Warriors right now, and they, they uh, I think the Thunder are in Chase Center in like a, you know, yeah. Florida, so. Big um, homestead. You know, Big homestead. Yeah. The Oklahoma City, New Orleans, and then you get the uh, T-Wolves with Carl Anthony Towns back on Sunday. 
Yeah, and uh, you know, tiebreaker. The Warriors can win the tiebreaker over Minnesota and the Thunder, who are right under them, with two home games coming up. Five of their last eight are at home. We know the the road home splits for the Warriors. Uh, I think Chassie mentioned earlier at Portland to end the season. Yep. You know, Portland will probably be giving that one away. I wouldn't mm-hmm. expect Lillard that night. Um, so I think it sets up well for them. And also, you know, I think Gary Payton the second will be back probably before the end of March. You know, he's coming. Uh, and, and that's, that's another rotation boost that will help. So this, these last two wins, particularly last night, I do think set them up to not only solidify themselves at least in six, but like you said, I mean, I think the Clippers are catchable. I doubt Phoenix is. You don't, right. you don't have the tiebreaker against Phoenix. They're three and one against you this season. So that makes them tougher to catch. My question to you guys would be, do you want five, though? No, no. I, I've been yelling. No. I want six, and I want Sacramento six and Memphis. Four. I want Sacramento and Memphis in the first round. I don't even want four. I don't even want to deal with yeah, the Phoenix Because four sense. means Phoenix. You just get Yeah, yeah but you get the home home. game. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. matter. Phoenix doesn't care. They'll win on the no, road. Kevin Durant. He's You're, playing home right. on the road. Yeah, you want Kevin Durant in the first round of the playoffs? I, I, for drama, maybe. I, I'm good off that. I'm good I, off that. I mean, it'd be good for the league. That's what I'm saying. Great. Well, I'm I, wouldn't Adam Silver want that, like, in the second or third round? And obviously, if they're four or five, you know, that would be in the conference finals. But I, I want I want Warrior Sack. That's what I want. How about Warriors, how about Warriors and Grizzlies? Just, let's just get it. Give me that. Get, on get them out of the way early. Get them out of the way early. Then we get a classic second-round series between the Sacramento Kings and the Warriors. One week from today, though, Anthony, as you're way out the door, Mariners, Guardians, I've been looking at that Guardian team. Well, not today, but we'll talk about it down the line. I'm, I got an eye on them. Back-to-back oh, uh, Central uh, Division Central, champs. AL Central favorites, for sure. I agree. Oh, the Giants opening in New York. You guys got to get hyped. Yeah, yeah, I'm so pumped. Yankee Stadium. But then the game, start, was, then the game was starting. If Judge takes one gone. swing at the entire <laughs> series, I'm going to lose my mind on Kapler. Shane Bieber, one of the best pitchers nobody knows about. Cleveland Guardians. He's a stud. How, how many home runs is Aaron Judge going to hit in that series? If he takes one swing... I'm going to be furious. On behalf of the organization, after being used uh, and played like a fiddle, they better put up the four or beam him in the back and the butt every single time he steps to the plate. I don't want one highlight. Who hit two? Who hit two and in that series? But if Joe Shasky's back there umpire and he's tossing everybody out. I know. When, do not, if you see him show up to your game, do not want him reffing it. That's for sure. Anthony, you're the best. See you tomorrow you're the best, night. Slates. Uh, Philadelphia, the Warriors. Good stuff, Slates. Uh, all right, see y'all. All right, Anthony Slater, one of the best out there, man. Sorry we went long with him, but it's just a fun conversation, man. Basketball, just kicking out with three dudes here on the show. Uh, we got to get Slater. I know we go long. The boss is going to talk to us, I but know, you know what? I know, but you know what? That was a conversation. Slater's, Slater's must. He's appointment radio. Yes. And people love Slater. They do. They read his stuff. They retweet his stuff. He's a big timer. He knows the game inside and it, out. So he's right on them. Dallas Mavericks needing to have a come to Jesus moment with Luca, tr- and Luca having a come to Jesus moment with himself. Trust me, they're trying. They are trying. Like, be, this guy I, doesn't get it. From, from a television perspective. Oh, the, look at you, little baby boy Luca. You know what? Let's talk about it on the other side. I do the, want to talk the, about 